On this edition of Focus on the Parliament, we take a look at the decision of the World Bank to suspend funding to Uganda. This follows the passing of the anti-gay law in Uganda, which criminalizes homosexual acts. It will be noted that the World Bank has up to a portfolio of 5.2 billion in credits to Uganda. The question is, can Uganda survive without the World Bank funding? What about the international image, the international relations? Can Uganda sustain this kind of law? Is it attainable? Is it economically viable? But if Uganda does succumb and it alters the law, is this good for the sovereignty of the country? To answer these questions and much more, is Uganda's best brains, some of the best minds are here with me in the studio, to help you untangle these intricacies. Now, do grab yourself a cup of Ugandan coffee, take a seat, and be ready to be entertained, to be engaged, and to be inspired. On my left is Dr. Ndevesa Mwamusa, who is a lecturer of political history at Makere University. Dr. Ndevesa, you must welcome the show. Thank you, and good morning to the viewers and listeners. How is the Premier University? Uh, the Premier <coughs> University is also surviving in the context of third world. Mm -hmm. You can hear how <laughs> we are all struggling <laughs> under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. But it is about to open and uh, I think it will be Makerere now because mm -hmm. Makerere in Kiswahili means noise. Oh, <laughs> so when okay. Makerere is not making makerere. noise, it is an Makerere. Uh, <laughs> we look for some good noise coming out of Makerere. Next is uh, Honorable Chiza Wini, who is the former leader of opposition and now a member of the Alliance for National Transformation. Opposition Honorable in Chiza Parliament. Wini, mm. you most welcome the show. Thank you, Harris. Good morning, viewers. It's always joy for me to be here. Good. Mm. Very smart in the NT colors. The NT must be doing very well. Yeah, indeed, it's doing very well. Yes. I, I love it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, last but by no means the least is uh, Professor Morris Ogenga Latigo, who is the first leader of opposition mm. and a member of the Forum for Democratic Change. Now, FDC has been the news lately. Professor, you're most welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and uh, good morning, uh, our viewers, and good morning, colleagues. Mm -hmm. I am not the very first. Okay. I, am, I'm, I was the first under the 1995 yes, consensus. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. the, the very yes. first was... Basil Bataringa. Yes, yes, <laughs> under the 1995 dispensation. That yes. is in independent Uganda, yeah. but in the city of rural Uganda, mm -hmm. the first leader of opposition was Apollo Milton Obote mm. in 1961, <laughs> when Chiwanuka was the chief minister. Uh, all right. That was pre independence. Okay. But yes. in the city of rural. Self government. Yes. <laughs> I told you, I told you, some nice situation there. Yes. Professor, how is the FDC? Um, un unfortunately, you, you, uh, uh, when you were introducing me, mm -hmm. you made the wrong assumption. I, retreat right. I retreated from FDC okay. some time ago. All right. um, I'm not in limbo because uh, I have not seen. I would have gone straight to heaven. Okay. So I'm not in limbo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in limbo, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a band politically. Oh, 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 I'm right. just taking it easy. All right, for now. interesting, but we yeah. do hope and pray that they are very well. Yeah. Well, we'll start with you, Professor. The World Bank's decision to you know, halt any further funding uh, to Uganda, and this makes Uganda join the list of uh, blacklisted countries by World Bank. The first is North Korea, and the other is Cuba. What does this mean for Uganda? Well, first of all, I think I think what has happened is is tragic because mm -hmm. the World Bank, uh, in the years that have been in in academia and in leadership, had never been political, mm -hmm. and they, they never attached their support for a country to some of the very 
basic things like the laws they enact. Mm. They would, that was not generally how the World Bank acted. Mm. If you followed the right economic policy, they would give you support. In, in the case of Uganda, there used to be structural ad adjustment. But seeing what is happening now, and seeing that that one law uh, triggers the World Bank suspension of aid support to Uganda, mm. it tells you that there's more to, mm. to it mm. than just that law. Mm. There must be something else, but the, the, the World Bank has used Mm. that particular uh, law uh, to trigger. Because this law was enacted before, mm. and the World Bank did not suspend, let's say. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm very keenly watching what is the real issue. Mm. Then. <laughs> yeah. And some have questioned why Uganda, because on the African continent there are other countries that have the same kind yes, of legislation. Ghana. Mm. Yeah. So, so we... we there must be something else going on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Honorable Winnie, what's your take? Well, it's very unfortunate mm. that the World Bank has <clears throat> taken this decision and they based it on uh, violation of rights. Mm. I know there are so many rights that the M7 regime has violated. Mm. And the World Bank continuously gave us money. I think <laughs> I would like to buy professors' uh, thinking. Mm. But I think it is, th this is just something on the surface that we see. Mm -hmm. I think they used something that they knew mm -hmm. was there, and that maybe many people condemned. Mm -hmm. But Ugandans said we are strong and we are firm. And also maybe they also want to highlight their importance mm -hmm. in the development of our country. Mm -hmm. Because while this law was being enacted, statements of the kind that, you know, we can do without their money, mm -hmm. we can yeah. manage ourselves, <laughs> you know, we hate the West, mm -hmm. we now can go to Russia, we can <laughs> go anywhere. And I think they just wanted to test and mm -hmm. see, can these people really stand on their own without us? Mm -hmm. It is unfortunate mm -hmm. that the reaction has been that strong. And of course, as Ugandans, it speaks volumes about the way the world sees us. Mm. So we still want to watch and see how our leaders will take up the matter. Mm -hmm. We still want to see whether they can take another step to mm -hmm. go and approach the World Bank because there are so many projects that are being funded with the support mm -hmm. from the World Bank. Service delivery to the local governments where the common person stays. Mm talk about the road network that we are talking about, that, that we are proud of as a country, mm -hmm. there is a hand of the World Bank. Indeed. And so if the World <clears throat> Bank withdraws support, uh, the other day I was hearing the minister saying, you know, we shall even have to cut budgets. Mm -hmm. We shall even have to reduce salaries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the matter is going deeper mm -hmm. than what imag Ugandans may imagine. Mm -hmm. So it is so sad and I, we want to really see how the country will react. And when I talk about the country, I'm not talking about you and me. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the leadership of this nation, mm -hmm. how they will react to this and see how they get maybe alternative means of survival for those who will be affected by the decision of the World Bank. Mm -hmm. So we, we are yet to see mm -hmm. the, the reaction of the government of Uganda. I'll come back to you on some of the specific issues that you raised, but yeah. for now let's bring in uh, Dr. Andrewsa. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Comment on the similar? Yes. Um, I think we must realize that uh, our position mm. as Uganda in the world geopolitics is vulnerable. Mm. <laughs> And as my friend Professor Yash Dandon normally says, uh, you do not poke your <laughs> finger in the eyes of a lion, mm -hmm. in this case of the empire. <laughs> and uh, we are beginning to see a new Cold War. Mm -hmm. There is the, a class of civilizations, as uh, Professor Huntington did say. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia 
uh, claims that it is fighting, uh, among others, mm. it is fighting the West for introducing things like homosexuality mm. to, to the Russian community. And the West is saying that they are a democracy and they are fighting, they are trying to universalize their values. Mm -hmm. And Museveni seems to be forgetting that there is an empire somewhere <laughs> and he is positioning himself uh, in a manner that he seems to be on one side. Mm -hmm. And therefore in this clash, mm -hmm. you know, when two elephants fight, they say the grass suffers. Mm -hmm. Although even when they make love, the grass is not safe. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know whether we are going to be safe That's because <laughs> the passing of the law yeah. was dramatized. Yeah. Yeah. There was already an existing law which actually criminalized homosexuality exactly. and had harsh penalties, mm. which was left by the British, by the way. And nobody had complained about it. And possibly what they the value they have added in is promotion, which they could have done by amending the other one, mm. just amending without a, 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 a borrow about it, mm. and put their provisions for discouraging mm. promotion. Mm. But I think the government... Venarim wanted to use it as an instrument for political popularization. Mm -hmm. And now these other Western powers have taken it on. Mm -hmm. And they would want to punish Uganda uh, 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 because it is a proxy war or a proxy mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. So how do you punish Uganda, which seems to be in bed with the Russia? And you can take on anything. And this is handy now. It has come mm -hmm. in handy. It is emotive. Uh, it is spotlighted. It is spotlighted globally. These other human rights, when you, be, you beat these opposition leaders, mm -hmm. they are not spotlighted. Mm -hmm. But when you pass the anti-homosexuality law, mm -hmm. it is spotlighted. So mm -hmm. the World Bank takes the opportunity mm -hmm. to capitalize on that one and punish you. And don't forget the World Bank is an instrument in the hands of the Western world. Mm. Uh, by the way, I hope the viewers, all the viewers there uh, 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 know that the president of the World Bank must be an American. Mm -hmm. The president of the World Bank must be an American. Oh, really? Is yes. So? Yeah. And the president of IMF, mm. or the director of IMF, must be a European. Okay. It is UN which rotates and maybe cannot be the, the, the Secretary General mm -hmm. cannot be among the the, the, the five. Mm -hmm. or, or what are they? These Security uh, Council. Yes. The Security yes. Council five. Mm -hmm. But for the other one, it must be an American. So mm -hmm. uh, if you have to survive globally, mm -hmm. as you pointed out, you have to have a certain image mm -hmm. and you have to know your position. You have to be very careful because legitimacy of a government mm. is not only in the global world, in today's global world, is not derived only from the, 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 the domestic support mm -hmm. that you get from the voters, mm -hmm. but also from international support. Mm -hmm. So you see, there is a problem with international support now, and we must know who is the governor mm -hmm. under the current global world. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Western-led globalization. Mm -hmm. And Western-led globalization, World Bank is a very, very critical institution mm. within that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, what World Bank decides might easily be taken up by mm -hmm. the other lending institutions mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Institutions like IMF. Like IMF, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, World Trade Organization, mm -hmm. like uh, others. Mm -hmm. So now that complicates our diplomatic <laughs> relations. So uh, I think Uganda uh, will have to rethink and reassess the situation mm -hmm. and reimagine the future, mm -hmm. the future relations with the World Bank. Yeah. Because the relations between uh, World Bank members, we are a member of the World Bank, uh, 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 is such that it is paternalism, not partnership. Mm -hmm. But if a, a, a developing country, a, a least developed country thinks that the relationship is paternalistic, mm -hmm. it is mistaken. Mm -hmm. It is under paternalism mm -hmm. and you know, under paternalism 
when you become an errant boy according to the to, to, to your father who the acts in America yeah. you will be punished accordingly <laughs> indeed uh, thank you so much dr Anderson. uh professor latigo um after the decision by the world bank president Museven responded and i quote it is unfortunate that the world bank and other actors dare to want to coerce us into abandoning our faith culture principles and sovereignty using money. They really underestimate all Africans. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see, the, I, I, you know the first enactment of the Anti-Homosexuality Act mm -hmm. started with the bad he bill mm -hmm. yeah. when I was leader of the opposition. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when that bill was about to come to the floor of the house, mm -hmm. Uh, Apollon Simbambi, as lead of government business, used to call me in the mornings. So he called me, talked about other things, and he asked me about this. Mm. And I said, uh, 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 Professor, if I were to be a malicious opposition, mm. I would advise you to enact this law. Mm. But as a Ugandan, mm. My advice is let us leave this bill to die <laughs> in the eighth parliament. Mm. Because the consequence mm. doesn't affect we the elite. Mm. The consequence will <clears throat> affect the ordinary Ugandans. Exactly. And but I've I've written even before. Mm. Homosexuality is not is not something that was brought from the West. That mm. is a lie. Mm. In our in, in my actually culture. Mm. A boy who is not very straight, mm. they will take him to the ankles. So that is, is removed from the cohort with which he, do, he grew up with. Mm. And then the uncles would know why he was taken there. They would even look for a wife mm. and get him a wife. Mm. And the panel beat him to leave normally. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's, it's a biological tendency. Mm. And to suggest that the West has brought it here. Mm. About which, which West are they talking about, which, are, which some of us have never encountered? Mm. I, I, I lived in times when there were priests. Mm. I lived in times when there were Western uh, and wives teaching in, in Makerere. Mm. I only had one case mm. of an Australian who was actually mm. a homosexual. Mm. So, so <clears throat> the, the president saying that it should not, the West should not impose its uh, mm. culture. Even religion, the religion they are talking about mm. is Christianity, which is the West yeah. <laughs> religion. <laughs> <laughs> on, so, on, on your point <laughs> of, of the origins of homosexuality, Professor, yeah. I mean, it's, it's ironical because when you look at the history of the laws, yeah. all European and Western countries criminalized homosexuality. Yes. So they once criminalized it, maybe out of, uh, I don't know, ignorance or misunderstanding of uh, the biology, but once they had evidence, yeah, but I just wanted yeah, to but, point but, that but out. But that, that is totally be besides the point. And, and by the way, you, I know you will bring us to that discussion. And yeah. the president says, oh, we, we, are go we are going to be okay with our oil. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> the president is not being honest with Uganda. Mm -hmm. Because the 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 oil agreements with the oil companies mm. is horrible. Mm. Mm. Those companies have to recover their investments yeah. before you start before. testing oil mm. yeah. money. So what is he going to do? Mm. And you know, these guys, even the, even the lousiest cost, they, they amplified it. Mm. So that what they have to recoup before they they can share profits with Ugandans. Mm. It's huge. So even that oil is, 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 is giving people false hope. Mm. The reality is that what has happened, happened on a very unnecessary ground. Mm. I mean, <clears throat> it, the postering in parliament mm. and even in the media, oh, you know, what is wrong with us? <laughs> yeah. We are playing too much the gallery. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Which, that, ga- which uh, gallery? <laughs> <laughs> which gallery? Because the, 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 the citizens. The, the citizens. citizens. The citizens. Yes, but yeah. but it, it, the citizens will, will be subjects. the big will be the biggest victim mm. of this now, mm. and they will turn against them. Mm. Uh, Honorable Winning, I want to read another statement. This is a response by uh, the National Inter Platform President mm-hmm. uh, Robert Chagrani says it's disturbing how institutions like the World Bank give priority only to gay rights and ignore all the other gross human rights violations, including mass murder, torture, detention without charge, and undermining democracy by rigging elections. Dear World Bank, all human rights matter. Is this a double standard by World Bank? I think we, we don't know Actually, but I want to thank the Unity Platform Mm -hmm. president for highlighting all this. And I think I noted it at the beginning Mm -hmm. that, you know, there is a lot of violations of human rights that Mm -hmm. has happened in this country. Mm -hmm. Yes, he calls the killings. Talk about the killings of 2020. Talk about the killings of 2016. Mm -hmm. Talk about the imprisonment of people, political prisoners. Mm -hmm. Talk about the miming of so many Yes. Ugandans that is happening in these they call safe houses. Mm. All this has been documented and nobody mm. pointed a finger. Mm. Some of us on our own evolution took mm. seven to the ICC. Mm. Nobody came to our aid. Actually, the World Bank responded to those uh, claims by saying, quote and quote, we are not a human rights organization. So, it, it, <laughs> I, I, I really don't think yeah. At the back of their mind, they think they are talking about human rights mm. because they are not a human rights organization. Mm. I am so surprised that at this time, the issue of homosexuality is now unveiling their true face of appearing to be defenders mm. of human rights. Mm. Many of us have defended human rights, by the way. Mm. And the World Bank <clears throat> has remained silent, mm. has not come out to say, yes, I think, yeah. You know, the Honorable Maurice Ogenga Latigo was mm. among those who went to court mm. yes. in 2014. Yes. He and, was and, among those yes. who went to court to challenge mm. the and, legality. And, and we knocked that particular law. Yes. And we survived up to now. Yeah. And we have because been of, moving. Thank you very much. Now, it's, it's not that really we want to say the homosexuals should continue doing their thing. Mm. We, it's not that we say they should continue promoting it, mm. but we also say the World Bank has overreacted. Mm. And we know that even when this law is in place, mm. by the way, homosexuality will continue. Of course. Because yeah. the law, in, <laughs> as it is now, there is no way that Anything they can be it. able to implement it. Yeah. People who are doing homosexuality do not make announcements mm. that we are going here to do homosexuality. Including those who do anyway prostitution. Mm-hmm. Majority of them don't do announcements. Mm-hmm. So it is not even easy to implement this law. Yeah. So there is no reason why the <laughs> World Bank should use now the parameter of homosexuality yeah. to deny Ugandans mm-hmm. money. They can say, yes, at the, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Or maybe it is just a, a cream on the teapot, but underneath, there are other issues exactly. that we want to highlight. Let them put them clear. <laughs> Same 70, we yeah. are denying you support yeah. because one, you are not legitimately elected. Mm-hmm. You have cheated elections mm-hmm. time and again. Mm-hmm. We are bothered by the way you are treating citizens mm-hmm. and we shall all you can and say, yes, I think you are right. Correct. But bringing in an issue which we know as Ugandans that mm. may not really cause that much danger to the population mm. in Uganda, mm-hmm. we think it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. On their own, they said they are not a human rights organization. Mm. So it is double standards for them to use mm. the issue of homosexuality to deny Ugandans money. But also, this should tell us Ugandans that we should not do laws out of excitement. 
In the case of the anti-homosexuality law, there was a lot of excitement. People who have never spoken felt now they are on top of the game. This is now the time for them to show that they are legislators. There are terrible issues happening in this country, and each legislator is silent. Many of our young people during COVID had pregnancies, including a young girl of 12 years from Mohocha who became pregnant and is now a, a kid taking care of another kid. Mm. None of my MPs spoke about this issue. But all of them were all mm. over talking about uh, homosexuality, homosexuality. Mm. By the way, if there is anybody who has <coughs> promoted and marketed homosexuality, mm. it is our own leader. Yeah. Mm. To the extent that they would even go telling people that those homosexuals have a lot of money. And they know that our population is poor. Mm -hmm. People will say, just going out with a, a man like me and I get a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Let me just go and do it. Mm -hmm. So if there is anybody who promoted, who marketed, who publicized homosexuality, mm -hmm. it is the Ugandan leadership that did it. They are Ugandans who had no idea of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know it exists. Mm -hmm. We know it is happening. Mm -hmm. And it worries us as leaders. It worries us as parents. But that is not the greatest problem mm -hmm. that the country is facing. Mm -hmm. To the extent that we are sacrificed as citizens mm -hmm. from accessing services from neighbors just because people wanted to be excited and capture the attention of the entire world. Here we are. We are here. Well, indeed, like the, the two professors said, mm -hmm. it is the common Ugandan that will mm -hmm. suffer. Because majority of the workers in government whose salaries are going to be slashed, they have families. Mm. They have other Ugandans that they take care of. So when their, sal their salaries are slashed, there is nowhere they will get money. This decision is going to even escalate the corruption tendencies that we have in our government. Because mm. many of those who were thinking are going to run the projects under World Bank and possibly get some little money out of it, they will resort to the little that they have. Mm. So it is a disaster. I pray that World Bank reconsiders. But World Bank should also tell us what their interests are. Fair enough. Uh, Dr. Ndevesa, hearing from uh, Professor Latigo and Honorable Chiza, one can't help but think that there is more than meets the eye, that actually it may not be mere gay, uh, the anti-gay law that compels the decision, but rather something more. And in your earlier conversation, you indicated that you said that before the decision had been in Russia and deal dealing a lot with Russia. Can this, uh, you know, the, the, the association of Uganda and Russia have something to do with the decision? Yes, uh, but it is much more than that. Mm. <laughs> if I can give it a wider context, yeah. uh, I, I think Uganda and uh, our president is biting more than he can chew. Mm. Uh, before the anti-homosexuality law was passed, he had also chased away uh, the, the, the UN Human Rights Yeah. No, yeah. before the UN Human yes, Rights Commission, yes, yes, yes. there was this uh, democratic facility. Oh, DGF. DGF. Yeah, DGF, yes, yes. DGF was a facility yeah. of EU mm. to, uh, which was democracy aid, mm. not development aid, mm. which was bringing in uh, about 600 billion. Yeah. Million dollars. Million dollars. Million yes. Dollars, yes. Mm -hmm. Which was a lot of money, mm -hmm. which was democracy aid. But I think uh, the government of Museven saw that uh, democracy aid is uh, interfering with his, uh, his politics of limiting mm -hmm. the voice of very many groups. Mm -hmm. That one was just away. Then he followed it up with the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, mm -hmm. which he has also chased, okay. uh, uh, chased away. Mm -hmm. Now, these are global players and not small global players. Mm. Uh, actually, to give it a, a wider context, even EU, this financial year, reduced its aid. And it is not common mm. for EU to reduce. Mm. It normally adds on. Mm. But this time it reduced, I think, by 10% or something like that. Mm. You can see even EU is concerned. The bilateral, don bilateral donors from the European Union might also be considering reducing aid mm. to Uganda, except maybe France, 
And I will explain about France. <laughs> That's not obvious to everybody. Mm. France is getting uh, uh, an inroad into this region. Mm. Because after the debacle in Rwanda and Congo, mm. France was losing out. It is coming back. Mm. You know, Total, Total Energies mm. is the one which is going to, 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 to fund the oil, the oil. Part of it. Mm. Total has also got concessions in Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm. And actually, after the elections in Uganda, these last elections of 2021, mm. all European countries almost condemned the, the elections except France. Wow. France is coming in. So uh, he could capitalize on France, but also France mm. on issues of, 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 of gay rights. It, it supports gay rights. Mm. But apart from France, the other countries seem to be pulling off. And that does not go well for us, especially on issues of democracy aid. Okay, the president and the NRM may not mind about the democracy aid, but also on social aid, mm. social services aid. Mm. Remember, uh, uh, our health services is almost funded 60% mm. by funds from the West. Mm. Remember mm. the East, the East China, Russia, they don't fund social services. Mm. They don't mind about your education. They don't mm. mind about your health. They can give you infrastructure, yeah. but and they're guns. not health. And they will give and you guns. guns. And guns. <laughs> when it comes to health, they will go slow. Mm. So you say D might follow up mm. and reduce aid, especially uh, to uh, 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 retrovirus, uh, yes. whatever. Yeah, Those uh, uh, ARVs. Mm. Uh, 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 and the issues of immunization. Mm. So we are actually in Kwagamaya, and I think even the government has started, uh, from the statements even of President M7, mm -hmm. he is saying, nevertheless, we, shall, we are going to continue uh, 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 yes. engaging. Yes. <laughs> and I heard uh, last night Minister Musas uh, 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 also saying, uh, we might reverse the budget, but in the next, in any case, we are still uh, engaging. engaging. Uh, I would not be very surprised if this law, which has been challenged in courts, mm. I would not be surprised if quietly the government does not support those who took well, the case to court yeah. mm. so that they, they can reduce. Remember, even the Pope has commented. Oh, and yeah. we have high, this homo, anti homosexuality mm. law yeah. has spotlighted Uganda in many ways. Mm. Yeah. There is also the question of death penalty, mm. which I think the West is not comfortable with. Mm. Now, even the Pope said, ah, okay, I think I would be with you except on death penalty. Mm -hmm. The Archbishop of Canterbury also was uneasy about the death penalty. Mm -hmm. I heard even the Church of Uganda, the Anglican Church, was not comfortable about the death penalty. I hope we are not opening a Pandora's box mm -hmm. by this law, because now the question of death penalty mm -hmm. might, be, might come in. Mm -hmm. And when you send away the office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, mm. then you highlight Uganda, you spotlight Uganda on no, for issues human of ra human rights. For human rights mm. observance. Mm. They may be away, yeah. but they are focusing. Mm. And you know, we are now transparent. We are now under this... Uh, we're, we're, we're naked. <laughs> we are naked. <laughs> as, as Not square. transparent, but naked. <laughs> <laughs> what was this thing of Kabwa of South Africa? Yeah. Uh, uh, you remember the, this, uh, the, the this big, game, the, the big, big brother. brother. Mm -hmm. Now the big brothers are going to be focusing on Uganda, mm -hmm. are going to make us jittery, yeah. are going to put us on tenter hooks. Yeah. Instead of addressing real issues, yeah. we are going to address issues when we are on tenter hooks. Yeah, whereas, tenter. whereas this could have been yeah. done in such a way that they would have a little bit amended, yeah. mm -hmm. passed some statutory instruments yeah. by the Ministry of Education especially mm. to discourage it being yeah. promoted in, in schools, schools. Yeah. without putting us on mm. spotlight. When they put you on spotlight, like now we are put on spotlight, there is somehow how we are emotional because we know we are on a TV. <laughs> when Uganda yeah. is put on TV, <laughs> yeah. you know how you, you can mm. be derailed. Yeah. You, uh, you can be diverted from promoting real issues mm. and you start engaging and investing all your energies mm in the uh, image promotion, in, uh, in all those things. So I, I, I think uh, uh, there is a saying that good intentions must be accompanied by wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are good intentions of passing the anti-homosexuality law, 
but it needed wisdom. I don't think there was any good intention. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Doctor, <laughs> the reason I highlighted Russia, and, and thank you very much for that broad context, mm. uh, it is very helpful for our viewers, is because of what is happening in the western part of Africa. And some commentators have said this is now a new scramble. And uh, if you've been following the news, you can't help but think that uh, there is a geopolitical war taking place on the African continent. Yes. Yeah, Russia and yes. its allies yeah. against the West yeah. In, yeah, in, in West Africa. Yeah. And now I've been watching news around Kenya, Ghana, Tanzania, and Malawi, and they are saying, well, they have come for Uganda, they are coming for us yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And Professor Pierre Mumba commented and said, all aid going forward is going to be conditional on accepting gay rights. <laughs> yes, and that's why I, I, I thought you would... Uh... Uh, actually, to, to add on, yeah. uh, we, we have challenges with EU, mm. EU partnership agreements. Yes. And there, is, there was an agreement signed some more than 20 years ago called the Cotonou Agreement. Mm. That was an agreement between EU and third world countries mm. and, developed, and least developed countries. Mm. There is a clause there about observance of human rights. Mm. And you have to understand, and the viewers there have to understand, that under this universalism, mm. the, the, the West universalizes their values. So the values of the West, they think they are global. Mm. And modernity means Western. Mm. There is no alternative modernity. <laughs> West, the modernity must be Western. Western. You know, they are clashing with the Arab world, with the Muslims, yeah. like the carpet of ICC, mm -hmm. of IC, mm -hmm. which also universalizes Islam and says mm -hmm. everybody must be under universal carpet. Mm -hmm. And we, shall, or we should all be under the, the values of Islam. Mm -hmm. The West is also saying since the, the time of enlightenment, that is about 18th century, mm -hmm. the West thinks that everything must be under the Western value system. Mm. The, 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 the West tries to, to create an image, if I can use a biblical language. Mm. They want to create the world under its own image. Mm. And when you challenge it and you seem to be the leader mm. of challenging that image, mm. they will react. But, and they have reacted. But, but Professor, <laughs> I, and I would like to ask this question to all of the panelists. On that very question of, uh, you know, universalization of Western culture. Yes. And I have heard it a lot in the public space that uh, it's an imposition of the Western culture on us. But isn't it fair to say that as a neutral observer, if you get the Western values and cultures and subject them to the test of reasonableness, they are actually always fair, natural, and conscientious, as opposed to some of these other values that we call African, which in most cases are not necessarily reasonable, there are sometimes most of them are unfair. What, what would be your comment? I, I would like to start with you, Prof, and then we we'll take a short break. That's a uh, issue. <laughs> you, you, you know, I, 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 I sometimes uh, give very little attention to, to this. To me, I consider them petty issues. Mm. The <laughs> values are just by the way. Yeah. Life is about economic well-being. Exactly. And the social well-being. And not only that, I will come. No, no. Yeah. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, for, for the West. Man has not lived by bread alone. I, I, I have no Doctor, problem with that. Let him make his point. <laughs> I, have, I, I have no problem yeah. with that. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah. But when you deal with international competitiveness, mm. those values don't count. Mm. It is the resources you have and the ability to influence others mm -hmm. that count. Mm -hmm. And that is why the Arab countries and the Middle East countries are gradually having influence. Mm -hmm. Because they have the money. The economic value. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. China became very influential uh, in the current modern world because of economic power. And 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 for me that is and and for me that is where the fundamental problem uh, vests with African leadership mm. because we focus on very petty things. Mm. If we spend time educating, giving all 
our young people, quality education, mm -hmm. the kind of education we got mm -hmm. in our times mm -hmm. when, we, when we went to primary or to secondary or to university, mm -hmm. and, and created an, an environment where creativity, African creativity would be put to use. We will not be we will not be quarrelling with the World Bank mm. <laughs> because we have the potential to be exactly very very big, mm. and, and so this Western value system it is it is tacit. Mm. It is it is not. I've not I've, I've, I've I read I, I've read a lot of government programs from most of these countries. Yeah, nobody says. If, if they don't behave like this, mm. then we don't support them. Largely, it is, it is a, a focus on what can we get out of the relationship. Exactly. If it is valuable... It's American interest, European oh, interest, yes. in Uganda, exactly. in Africa. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so from that perspective, the issue of Western values and all this is, is not, to me, is not too important. All right. Honorable You know, I do believe in the African culture. Mm -hmm. I also believe in the <clears throat> Bible. Yeah. He was talking about a man not living on bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word <laughs> that emanates from the mouth of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, is but that you don't live on interest alone. They are also values. Uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I also believe, by the way, in the values, value system, mm. and I know that all Africans mm. work day and night to educate their children about the values. Each family has its own values that it holds so dear. Mm. Just like every organization has its own values that it holds so dear. Mm. And I can tell you that, you know, President Museveni told us, mm. and I still remember there is a, when he was speaking to the, to the country about homosexuality, mm. he said there is a, a word in Kinyankore, mm. a name they give to the homosexuals, which means even the traditional Munyankore mm. is aware that homosexuality Exists. Exists. Yeah. It is not a thing that was imported from the West. Exactly. While I was growing up as a young girl, mm. I still remember my mother telling me mm. that if you are a girl mm. and you are seen to be having an affair with another woman, yeah. you will never produce. Yeah. It was a, she was telling me it is a taboo. And, so, that, and that was way before. That when, was way before you could was, even know. Still, yes, still that there was the homosexuality. Yeah. I came to know later that mm. that was homosexuality. Mm. <laughs> now, my mother <coughs> knew that this thing existed, mm. which means there is nobody who imported it. Mm -mm. It has been with us. Mm. I heard about it in history, mm. it existed. And so I don't see anything white about homosexuality. Yeah. So for us to begin whitening it. <laughs> That's a nice one. Okay. Yes. By us whitening it, we are even making it more powerful. Mm. Because if our people think we shall go to the Western culture, we shall want to behave like Bazungu, we want mm. to even change our bodies because we want to behave like them, mm. they will think it is now modern and mm. it is a style, it is a fashion. Mm. To be homosexual. Mm. Let's teach our ordinary citizens mm. maybe the ills mm. in homosexuality. All right. Let's stick on to the values that we have as we work hard to get the financial muscle. Mm. As we work hard to get the financial muscle, there must be some ethical way of also handling mm. the financial muscle. Because right. we may get citizens who may just be all over looking for money and getting wealth so that they impress the other partners yeah. and ethically they are dead. In terms of values, they are dead. We mm. shall not compete still in terms of the geopolitics that uh, mm. Dr. Devesa talked about. So we need to combine the financial muscle, mm. the knowledge that we have mm. with the values. Yeah. If the African must compete on the continent of Africa itself, wherever you are, whether Ugandan, they must yeah. know you for certain values as Ugandans yeah. when you are going to Kenya. 
or when you are going to Congo. Mm. So that when you emerge as Africans going to either the west or to the east, mm. they will know that, yes, the Africans have arrived. But mm. even us, we don't speak with the commonality as Africans. Mm. That's why our presidents were going to <clears throat> Russia and each one of them is bargaining now. Can <clears throat> I have some, can I have some, <clears throat> some wheat? Yeah. They are begging for food when we have a rich, rich soils in Africa. Mm. So as long as we still have that sick mentality of yeah. thinking that we, we are big, big fish in small ponds, we are not going to make it. So our leaders, while we, we, we ask them to maintain the cultural values and norms of our traditions and societies, mm. We also want them to raise up to the occasion and ensure that they provide true leadership. Thank you very much. Dr. Ndevesa, there are some commentators who have said that the so-called African values didn't protect us against colonialism. Hmm. They have kept us poor. And after all, most of them are unfair and unjust. Uh, thank you for that. But let me first comment on the posturing. You see, the whole issue of World Bank aid to Uganda or whatever loans mm. is political. That's yeah. the politics of aid. Mm. And uh, the World Bank might be posturing, but also Uganda was posturing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you With want to posture <laughs> that it is a law, it is the anti homosexual that you are against, yeah. the World Bank will also posture mm -hmm. uh, that it is fighting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 discrimination. homosexuality, discrimination and cultural yeah. when actually it is fighting you over other issues. You know, there is this whole question of uh, a, new a new economic geography. Mm. BRICS now. Exactly. There is a BRICS block. Mm. Brazil, Russia, India, China and mm. South Africa. Yeah. And mm. China has got the, the road and silk project or strategy. Mm. And the, the BRICS want to start now a bank, even they wanted to start another bank, especially to sponsor uh, issues to do with infrastructure, mm. which was going to compete with the West. I think the Chinese currency, is it the yeah, Yuan? The Yuan. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the China wanted to be now the global currency, mm. also to compete with the, the dollar. dollar. Mm. Now, when all that is happening, and for us in Africa, we are still evolving and developing, and you start posturing like they are posturing, mm. they will trample you. They will trample you. Now, turning back to the issue of, 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 of values, uh, values are also not static. Values evolve. They are born, they evolve, because they are there to serve man. Exactly. In that manner, you include women, so don't challenge me about gender. <laughs> <laughs> about gender. Ah. So, the uh, values, the values <coughs> evolve according to society. Mm. Uh, and actually, at one, t at, at one time, don't be surprised to find homosexuality will also be acceptable here. Because it was not acceptable in the West. Mm. It is now acceptable. It is acceptable in South Africa. Mm. By the way, even Desmond Tutu, mm. the former Archbishop, oh, yes. he, he, Nobel Prize winner, yeah. the, the, the daughter was a, a, lesbian. Mm. He, a lesbian. He even appealed to Uganda mm. when the Barty Bill came. Yes. Mm. Yes. You see? Desmond. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so society is evolved at our level. Maybe mm. uh, the question of uh, uh, homosexuality looks uh, to be very extreme and evil and whatever. Mm. Uh, and the population, the population generally is, is, is against it. But what I wanted to bring out is that man does not live by bread alone. What I want to illustrate here yeah. is that we are always talking about interest, interest, interest. Interest meaning material issues. No, they are also value issues. Mm. They are non-material issues mm. that a man values, mm. that human beings yeah. value, yeah. that yeah. we should also consider when we are doing our global politics and diplomatic relations, even in the country. Mm. Don't violate human rights and think, do they bring food to your table? We don't live by food alone. Mm. There is a question of dignity, mm. of dignity of human beings. I find it very repugnant mm. for people to debase our dignity mm. and they say, ah, I don't mind provided we are getting, a, we are developing, we are constructing getting roads or whatever. Mm. No, there, is, there are certain things we value. Now, going back a little bit to the situation, to, 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 to universalism, mm. the West tends to emphasize 
sicula values values or culture or rationality mm. but you know the arab world and just, africa just hold it there we shall for come a second. back because uh, you raise very Please. fundamental issues we are back. going to take a very short commercial break and then when we return we shall continue with the conversation Please uh, do stay with us. Digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access, use, create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity, a right to be forgotten, and a right for protection of minors, among others. The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. Welcome back. We are exploring the implications of the World Bank decision to halt any further funding to Uganda. As indicated earlier, Uganda has a portfolio of up to 5.2 billion uh, USDs uh, in credit to uh, from the World Bank. And with me in the studios, we have some of the best minds, if I may call them, in the country to continue with the discussion. Dr. Ndevesa, Honorable Chiza Winnie, and Professor Maurice Ogenga Latigo. Before we took the break, uh, Dr. Ndevesa, you were still talking about the values, and then after that we can shift gears. Yeah, I was st still saying that the West, the Western world, yeah. Uh, <coughs> values more of situalism, mm. of situa values. They are also values. Mm. And uh, the others, like the Middle East and Africa, mm. are still considering non situa values and uh, they even uh, prioritize emotions. <laughs> <laughs> emotions are very important, by the way. Issues mm. of the heart, not of the mind. Yeah. If you go by only the issues of the mind, like you say, you are a professor, you are a doctor. Mm. You have the intellect, you can die of booze. Haven't you seen people dying of booze? Mm -hmm. You have to translate from the heart, mm -hmm. from the head to the heart. Mm -hmm. Because you will find a doctor who knows that smoking kills, mm -hmm. but he's smoking and he ends up dying of cancer of, of, of the lungs. Mm -hmm. You can find a priest who knows everything about how salvation is attained, mm -hmm. but he's the one who goes uh, sodomizing boys mm -hmm. uh, and goes to. to, to to, to hear if that is the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the, the issue is that we need to balance mm -hmm. situra values exactly. and non situra values. Mm -hmm. However, going back to our main theme, mm -hmm. I want to reframe it here and come back home to exactly those things, what is happening at the implications. Yes. Now, Adam Mugume, Dr. Adam Mugume is the director of research at Bank of Uganda, mm -hmm. recently issued a statement to the effect that our debt is unsustainable mm -hmm. unless we default, or <laughs> oil comes very quickly, or they cancel our debts. Now, our debts can only easily be cancelled by multilateral loans, which is now World Bank, IMF, and those ones. Mm. Not bilateral loans. Mm. Not, not bilateral donors. donors. Mm. Now, World mm. Bank is a leading multilateral donor. Yeah. And according to Mugume, he's a researcher at Bank of Uganda. He's saying our debt portfolio is unsustainable unless we default or we get the oil out very fast mm. or they cancel our debts. Yeah. So he's raising a red flag. Yeah. Now, we must be concerned. Let's not post around and say, hey, mm. hey, we are like this, we are like this. Mm. That World Bank is actually a knowledge bank. It is out, it's a global force. And if it weighs heavily on us, then we shall find ourselves so far 
as we talk, we, ha we don't have roads sustainably yeah. constructed. Kat Katonga, by the way, has never been opened. They still pass through Zimbabwe from Kabari. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Katuna Road and the one going to Bunagana, mm -hmm. they are still mm -hmm. not passable. Mm -hmm. Kampara, the potholes, they just put their dust, it has already gone away. <laughs> they were supposed to fund that one. Our students at the university are, are not getting the loans. Yeah. Scientists yeah. are complaining to the extent last time I saw on social media, even somebody from the military who is a scientist is also the complaining. The loan scheme halted admissions. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, when you look at all those things, you don't go posturing around. We, we appreciate that we have our sovereignty, including cultural sovereignty. That is appreciable. Yeah. But at the same time, we also have to appreciate your position uh, economically <laughs> and see how to strive through yeah. this economy, mm. this world mm. that is uh, not the, where there is no free lunch. Mm. And therefore, we have to find a way of renegotiating yeah. with the World Bank, of course, maintaining our dignity. But again, it's not a matter of poking your finger in the eyes of a lion. When you meet a lion, you have to find a way of scaring it. My father has been telling me, my father is an old man of 105 years. He still tells me stories how they would get out with the fire, you know? And the lion would think that this small boy, he was still young, and that time, maybe 10 years, his grandfather would tell him, get out of his fire, and the lion would run away. So you must get around the lion by putting your finger in its in its eyes, like one back. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Doctor. Now be careful. Yeah, maybe to give our viewers a deep appreciation of the magnitude of this issue, let's delve deeper into specific issues, specific sectors that the World Bank has been funding. We know that 20% uh, of our budget uh, is funded by World Bank or loans from World Bank and its allies, mm -hmm. including IMF and others. And, uh, you know, we said uh, earlier that the president of World Bank has to come from uh, America. It has to be an American. And we know that immediately after passing the law, the president uh, of uh, America, Joe Biden, said it was shameful and absurd that Uganda had chosen such a path. Now, America funds Uganda up the tune of over one billion. Most of it goes to the health <laughs> sector, sector that you had already indicated, Honorable Chiza mm. Wimi. Mm. Where do you see the country going if our leaders insist on their position, yet 60% of our, our health is... sector is not funded by our own money? If now this decision is followed by America also saying, all right, we have another sanction for you, no more funding. <laughs> no PEPFA, they had indicated actually that, you know, PEPFA could be also at risk. You, you, you see, the, we, we in Uganda, we like to talk about figures instead, yeah. instead of dealing with realities. Yeah. In spite of all those funding that we have listed, yeah. just walk from here to Kigali yeah. and go and see how Kigali is and how Rwanda is managed. Mm. Walk to Dar es Salaam and Dodoma mm. and see how those countries are managed. Mm. Walk to Kenya. Yeah. Now that is, and then come back and look at ourselves. Yeah. Look at our schools, look at our farmers. The hospitals. Look, look at our everything. Yeah. Even with that funding, we, we, we now compare ourselves with South Sudan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now without that funding, what is going to happen? Yeah. It, I, I mean, and it is so painful because mm. there's, I, 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 I travel yeah. the whole of Africa. Mm. There are very few countries that have the kind of potential that Uganda has. Yeah. Mm. Very few. Mm. Mm. If we could only sit and do our mm. things right. Yeah. I, I, when we were young, Kenyans would marry and come for honeymoon in Uganda. Mm. Now we can't even go to, for honeymoon in Kenya because many of us can't afford. <laughs> that is, that is the, the tragedy. Mm. And so when you ask, 
what is going to happen? I just hope that maybe our leaders will sober up mm. and, and, and say we must have a reset in this country. Yeah. Look at the money that is wasted in, in polit political institutions mm. from, you know, district chairman, uh, LC, Ward, uh, RDC, Gisus. Mm. All that money is money which is, which is not investment mm. that generates uh, wealth. Yeah. And, 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 and when you go, go. We're here, we're in Tinder. Yeah. Just, just walk behind and you look at the conditions of, of well, children people, and yeah. it is so painful. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do? You know, the Uganda, the loans, Uganda's loan was forgiven some time ago. Around 2000, between 1998. 2008. Uh, no, up, up before to, that. Up to 2000. Yeah. Before that, up because I, because I wrote about it uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, in an article. Nin uh, 98 yes. to 2000. Yes. 98 and, to 2000. And it was a lot of money. Yeah. Instead of our lo uh, loan forgiveness, mm -hmm. instead of us saying that this is now an opportunity to invest in agriculture and livestock mm -hmm. and transform the lives of rural people. Yeah. We, we just looked at it as free money. Mm. And people ate the money, mm. and the effect is gone. Mm. And, and by the way, what uh, Professor Ndebeza has talked about, yeah. we, 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 we face a very terrible risk going with the Russians. The Russians have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let nobody deceive you. Yeah, I, 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 I don't see them. I don't see how much they lend. You, you go, I, you, I go, you, you go to guns. Russia and you will also see. Yeah. Outside Moscow, you will see yeah. <laughs> the reality of what Russia is. Mm -hmm. They have no capacity to give us the kind of support yeah. that the Western world gives. Mm -hmm. And so if you make a deliberate choice, mm -hmm. you will be the, the worst victim of your own folly. Mm -hmm. and, and this is something that our leaders must really be told. Yeah. And, and why, can't, why can't we have things di discussed and resolved as a government, as cabinet? When you hear it is the voice of President Museveni only. Mm. This is not sustainable. Mm. And when you talk to ministers, there are ministers who are too scared, they would rather keep quiet and hold all, all on to their jobs then tell the president that, Mr. President, this, this is not leading us yeah. in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Honorable Winnie, you have heard from uh, Professor uh, Morris. Um, but some Ugandans argue that even when this man has been coming in, it's like if you have a homestead and uh, you've been earning a million, but your expenditure habits are out of, uh, of the roof, even if you increase the income to 10 million, mm. if you don't tame your expenditure and mm. be frugal and be prudent, it doesn't help the homestead in terms of development. Mm. Is this the case of Uganda? Yeah, Uganda, I think, lives large. Yeah. When you look at uh, our parliament, yeah. it's one of the biggest. When you look at our cabinet, one of the biggest. Yeah. When you look at the way we spend, and the way we manage the little that we have yeah. borrowed, <laughs> you can't believe it that Uganda, even after we have borrowed money, we still use it outside the reason for which we borrowed it. Yeah. You can't also believe it that Uganda, we borrow money and we keep it mm. on the accounts without... We pay interest. We pay interest and the money is there seated. Mm. Yes, goes we suffer years. from uh, indigestion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't... That's a nice one. <laughs> yes, we borrow money and we yeah. just keep it. We rush to go and borrow it. Mm. But when it comes, yeah. we don't spend it. Money we'll spend on the accounts even mm. four years <laughs> when we are paying interest mm. and we have not used it. Mm. By the time we start implementing the project for mm. which we borrowed the money, the costs of the items that we intend to use have 
gone up. And the terms have ended. The terms have ended. <laughs> Before you know it, the money has gone into mm. other ventures. And so it is really true yeah. that as a country, we have even not known our priorities. And mm. I think that is even why mm. we do act recklessly. Because if we knew what our priorities are, and we knew what our challenges are, then we would know how to handle our neighbors and mm. handling the partners that we deal with. Yeah. I'm not saying Ugandans should give up everything they have because they must go and impress mm. maybe the partners who want us to dust to their tunes. Mm. No. But even when we know that we are financially incapable, when we borrow, let's follow the money to the dot. Mm. Maybe this decision of the World Bank will also teach us some manners of being financially frugal, frugal mm. and have some financial discipline. Yeah. Because our attitude towards public expenditure yeah. is really very, very negative. When you see the way government officials mm. use the money that they have borrowed, mm. I got shocked when uh, Musasi <coughs> was saying, you know, members of parliament, mm. this act means that even some of your allowances are going to be reduced. Are going to, <laughs> to be reduced. Yeah. I said, eh. Yeah. So even us as a people, mm. <laughs> when we still believe that we are a rich nation, we mm. are a country naturally gifted by nature, mm. we can't even fund our, our wage bill. Mm. So we have to go and even borrow to pay our own workers, including parliamentarians and LOCs. Honorable uh, Basaiwa yes. is one of the sponsors of the bill. Yes. Uh, commenting after the World Bank's decision, he said that uh, Uganda is going to get new friends. Do you believe him? But they will also come with their own baggages. Mm. It could be true we shall get new friends, and mm. I know that the Uganda, <laughs> the, the Ugandan friends we are mm. looking for are Russia, mm, China. maybe China, mm. the Middle East, the Middle East. Mm. But. But, but, but the what, same, do, what, but, what do they what do they always offer to us? But the same, we have been friends to China. Yeah. They are doing many of the roads that are breaking down after one month. Mm. Many of the roads that they are working on are disposable <laughs> roads. Mm. We have been friends with Russia. Mm. I know apart from the, the, the machinery that we get from Russia, mm. we might not be getting too much. Uh, from the Russia. only thing I remember with those... <laughs> Developmental was mm. the spinning mill in Lira. Yes, yeah, under, under one. Under <laughs> one. From Russia. Maybe yeah. now that M7 wants to go into atomic energy. Yeah. Nuclear actually. I mean nuclear <laughs> energy. I think it is what is taking him to Russia. Yeah. I think it is his obsession with the nuclear nuclear power. Mm. I don't think that's fundamental. Me, that's what I think. Because but, apart from that, but, anyway, and the guns, but I don't see something serious that, that we can that get from Russia. To, to suggest that Russia and South Korea would build it, that is like uh, saying that we will use water and oil. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they have no South capacity. Korea has never done anything yeah. with Russia. Yeah. Never. So why, 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 why do we keep imagining that we will come Uganda, to Uganda, so we, shall, we shall unite that, them. That you can bring South Korea mm. and Uganda mm. to build a nuclear... Mm. If you had said North Korea, maybe. <laughs> but strategically thinking, is nuclear a strategic investment to look in, into? Don't we have other cheaper resources of, of, of energy? Well, the, 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 the rapid... Yeah. Energy sources yeah. development now. Yeah. Even to think nuclear is actually yeah. uh, the president is obsolete, literally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To come back to you, Doctor mm. Ndevesa. Um, I mean, Honorable Winnie has indicated that we could have other friends who could uh, lend to us. Uh, I agree with you that uh, maybe we need to reconsider as as a country the decision on the law and uh, get on the negotiation table with uh, World Bank because the consequences are dire. But on the other side, on the flip side, isn't this, isn't this 
an unhealthy relationship with the World Bank. The monopoly, the extent uh, of influence that the World Bank has over us, is it really a healthy kind of mm. engagement? Let me first talk about uh, getting alternatives. Mm. That didn't Mugabe have the alternatives? Mm. You know how Mugabe harassed, fought the West? Yeah. Possibly he had a point because those fellows came to, to, to Zimbabwe <laughs> and took all the land. <laughs> then he came and said, Our sovereignty, our sovereignty. Yeah. Now Zimbabwe is more dependent yeah, on, <laughs> on, on other countries <coughs> than it was. Yeah. You know, Zimbabwe yeah, by the way was ahead of many African yeah, countries many. in terms of development. Yeah. Where is Zimbabwe now? Didn't it see Russia and China and the other countries? Yeah. Zimbabwe now is crying. Mm. Actually, uh, actually, you go to Zimbabwe, <laughs> you want water if you don't have this one dollar bill. Yeah. <laughs> you don't buy anything with Zim money. So they are depending on the, on the, the inflation dollar. is still very high. And inflation is still yeah, very high. I, I, their money when we were last there, there, I didn't even see their money. Yeah. The Zim dollars I, are not there. I stayed there for one week, I never saw Zimbabwean money. Because so, everything is bought yeah. using US dollars. And therefore, they are depending on their monetary currency on, 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 on US and the West that they were castigating. Mm -hmm. India being here, he chased away the West. Mm -hmm. You know what happened to Uganda's shilling mm -hmm. after chasing away the West because he wanted sovereignty. Mm -hmm. We are not saying we don't want sovereignty, mm -hmm. but we must calculate our level of demanding that sovereignty <laughs> and do it in a very wise way. Fostering it. We have to do it in a very wise way. You don't just simply go like that and, uh, and hit yourself on, on, on those people. I mean, you, 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 you have to learn a lesson from Zimbabwe. Mm. What is happening to Zimbabwe? It's the best example. Mm. Zimbabwe here is the best example. Mm. So, coming from back to Uganda, as uh, my sister here, Winnie said, I am slightly very annoyed with the World Bank. <laughs> I want World Bank actually to give conditionalities to Uganda. Mm. Stringent more than they were giving or they are giving. Mm. But not in a certain issues like homosexuality. Mm. Exactly. Extravagance of the state. Mm. You have looked at our ministers. Mm. Yeah. You find a junior minister mm. has two vehicles. A convoy. A convoy of vehicles. Mm. How much fuel is going there? Every weekend they go home. They use state funds. State fuel, state machinery, <clears throat> four, uh, I mean, two vehicles. That is about 10 people. You are going with 10 people, you are giving them allowances, you are taking away, them mm. away from security. Mm. Why on earth does mm. a minister have to move with four convoys? Mm. I know they need security. Definitely, I don't wish them to be shot. Mm. But even with those convoys, by the way, can be shot. Mm. Even with those convoys, you can be shot. So, this extravagance of the state, the way they pay themselves, the way they pay themselves allowances, the way they, you know, when you go to the villages these days, and there is a very, very, very good house, one will ask, where does that one, is he in the government or is he in the army? Mm -hmm. What is he doing? <laughs> exactly. You know, mm -hmm. when they look at a posh car, mm -hmm. even when you are in Barara town, mm -hmm. and they see these gazelas of uh, Six hundred million. Hey, Mbawo Vija. In the Nigeria, they say those who are eaters. Do you see them? Wabareba. You know, Gambano. That kind of that kind of situation. You know, this government came in power that they were on the left. That they were frugal. That they were for the the downtrodden. Immediately we started having the elites taking advantage of being in power to amass wealth. They are the ones who dodge taxes. They avoid taxes. They don't pay taxes. You know, they, 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 they have connections. The whole issue of connections and Gambanogu. So, I wish the World Bank could put those conditionality and say, unless you reduce expenditure on those government okay. officials exactly. on allowances, mm. on salaries, and they demonstrate mm. it, mm. then we shall not give you more money. Mm. And the government is so extravagant, why yeah. can't even the government come up with a regulation that no government vehicle, mm. unless it is security, mm. 
should move over the weekend. What are they going to do over the weekend? Mm -hmm. They are subsidizing their farms. Mm -hmm. Me and he, uh, mm. and them, mm. if we, you go to, to, to your farm, if you have it at all, mm. you use your fuel. Mm. But you are competing with somebody who is using government fuel. Mm. And the vehicle is serviced by government. Yeah. That expenditure, the salaries they get, the allowances they get, the numbers that they have. Oh, wow, do we need this big uh, um, number uh, stadium or ca cabinet? They're still, they're still uh, 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 and these cities that we have created. Mm. By the way, have you listened to the news in the last two days? I listen to the news, may I listen even to local news. Mm. There is a problem in Barara. The, the city is saying the district of Barara should go away. Should go the district away. has refused. Mm. They are in a crisis. Yeah. Then last night I had a rumor <laughs> quarreling over the same. <laughs> Did we need to create these glorified uh, 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 trading yeah. centers yeah. to be cities? Mm. So we have. And by the way, many of those are having developments that are funded by the World Bank. Exactly. All the urban all transport, the urban is World Bank. Yeah. When you go to Guru, yeah. to Mbare, to Jinja, <laughs> you see those good roads. Yeah. That was World Bank. Yeah. And then we say we are sovereign, 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 sovereign. <laughs> sovereign who cannot construct even a meter of a gauge rail. <laughs> uh, standard gauge right. rail. Our, our time is so we have to be very wise. <laughs> yeah, our, our time is... Otherwise, we shall be Zimbabwe. Yeah, our, our time is fast spent. Uh, we have a few minutes to go. But uh, before we end the show, I would like to pick your mind on uh, what then is the way forward. And I'll start with you, uh, Professor Atigo. I thought uh, you'd end with me. But for your last message, I've yeah, got back to for but the last on, message. Honestly, yeah. the, this country, God favored. Yeah. 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 But I don't know whether in that process mm -hmm. it made us dumb to the reality that we have such a huge potential. Yeah. And all we need to do is just do things right. And doing things right means sitting down as Ugandans, talking, sharing with experts, people who have technical knowledge, no political interest, and listening to them and taking their advice. Unfortunately, that space doesn't exist. And we keep rolling down the valley. And please, you people in parliament, stop this empty posturing. Because to those people, you are nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Honorable Winnie. I really still would like to say the World Bank should stop double standards yeah. and come out openly to condemn all violations of human rights that the country is facing. There is a lot mm. that we can do together. Yeah. We also would like to ask our government that now this that has come into your face, you need to find a way of dealing with it. Because much of the money that we use to deliver services to the ordinary citizens of Uganda who are the voters of those in elective positions is from the World Bank. Yeah. So let's swallow our pride, <clears throat> get to the problem, yeah. and see how to encounter it. I still want to give them a benefit of doubt, like Msasizi said, that we are still talking. But I would imagine that the talk should have happened maybe even before. Because my thinking is that by the time the World Bank puts the matter to the paper, there might have been they would have knocked doors. Yeah, there might have been some <coughs> talking. By the time they put it to the paper, it means a lot has happened in between that the citizens don't know. Indeed. What the citizens of Uganda want to see is that they are helped to discover their potential and utilize it to the maximum. We have a young population which is energetic, which can be used with a good fertile soil. We have all along been encouraging government of Uganda to see how they help Ugandans to use their land to produce wealth. All they come with are programs of throwing here and there. Mm. You are coming with a program of Onaba Gagawale, but you are picking a few people, mm. give some hundreds of money which cannot be useful mm. 
Let them go on the ground and draw these programs with the help of experts who can guide the government to design real projects that can put money into the hands of the people. Then there we can start posturing mm -hmm. as uh, members of a sovereign state, a state that is self-sustaining, a state that is uh, governed well, and also check our governance question that has been around with us for some time. Let's see how we also consider the issue of transfer of power without necessarily pouring blood. Mm -hmm. This could be one of the issues, by the way, that the World Bank is concerned with. Mm -hmm. And then they will say, I think you, man, we need to hold some, some note somewhere. But their main issue is that we see, we want to see you think about how you're leaving Ugandans mm -hmm. without necessarily putting them into too much debts that we are in now yeah. and without letting them spill blood to see another leader coming into office. So let the World Bank just be open to the real issues that we think are behind the anti-homosexuality law. All right. We know the issues are there and we appreciate your concerns, but speak to the real issues. Don't just go around the corner. Thank you so much, Honorable. Thank you. I would like to build on Professor Latigo's uh, <laughs> issue of decision making, that we, sh we need to expand spaces for decision making. I don't know for the viewers there, you can make, if you have followed the, uh, the conversation since we started, you can make your own judgment. I don't know how stupid we are here. <laughs> Uh, how would you judge our stupidity? The <laughs> three of us here. <laughs> huh? Are we so stupid that we could not make a contribution towards nation building? Mm -hmm. Secondly, there is this notion mm -hmm. that patriotism is a monopoly of those who support NRM mm -hmm. openly or, 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 or vigorously. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are people who have been involved in spaces of decision making. They need to be listened to. Yeah. All of us needed to be listened to. Otherwise, this business of um, coming up with executive orders and uh, uh, last night, good enough, I had the president rescind his executive order about the monopoly of uh, adverts with UBC. Uh, I think the government or the NRM and its leadership should appreciate that there are some other Ugandans there also who can Make a contribution towards nation building. Let there no let this policy of limiting space, because there has been a policy of limiting space to any divergent view in Uganda, and thinking that we all have a monopoly and a correct line. Mm -hmm. So we have to make wise decisions and let decision making be spread so that okay, you assume that we are also stupid. But listen to some stupidity also. Maybe <laughs> it can make a contribution towards the nation building because yeah. the correct line also yeah. has limits. Exactly. And indeed it has limits and you can see we are still a least developed country. <clears throat> if you use other indicators, let me complete by giving you the indicators of Uganda. Yeah. If you look at our freedom index, mm. the global freedom index, mm. we are very far. Mm. If you look, of course, our GDP yeah. of just only four, four, 40 or something billion dollars, mm. It is, is very low. Mm. If you look at another indicator like human development, these days they talk about human development indicators. Mm. We are very, 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 very low in terms of human development indicators. If you look at polarization, this country is so polarized mm. that we are laughing at FDC, but what is happening in the FDC mm. is a reflection of very many for polarization. Look at the mm. church. Mm. The church is in disarray. Mm. Look at different institutions, they are in disarray. Mm. The universities are in disarray. Mm. So we need to ask, uh, we need to change, have a paradigm shift. Mm. You know, these days in the PDM, they are saying mindset change. Mm. It's not only the peasants who need mindset change. Yeah. It is a leadership which mm. mind, mind, mm. mindset, mindset change, change. Mm. so that we make contributions towards building this nation. Mm. First of all, when the World Bank and these other donors know that we are polarized, they will take advantage of that one. Do you see what is happening in West Africa, in, uh, in Niger? Those, those military fellows who have come into power, mm. they would have uh, come down if they didn't realize that the West African states
are also polarized. Once they know you are polarized, yeah. they will be strong. Once they know that Uganda is polarized, that there is a, no space for exchange of ideas, that the ideas are a monopoly of a few, then the World Bank will take that opportunity to take away our sovereignty. Our sovereignty is not only cultural. Mm. There is economic sovereignty, cultural sovereignty, ideological sovereignty, but much more so, the citizen sovereignty. Mm. We should not think about sovereignty as state sovereignty. Mm. You know, Uganda got state independence, not citizens independence. Mm. We want to move away from state independence to, to citizens independence so that the sovereignty we are talking about yeah. is of the citizen. A citizen who is being harassed by the soldiers mm. is he enjoying his dignity. Mm, right. He is uh, is well wrapped. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Ndevesa. Professor Ogenga Latigo, Honorable Chiza Wini, and Dr. Ndevesa Mwambusa, thank you very much indeed for honoring the invitation. It's been an honor. What a thrilling conversation it has been. Please, uh, would like to extend our invitation for the <laughs> for another time. I, I hope you are not hosting stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> not I mean, why don't they involve us in this year <laughs> making? Not at all. There is only sure. one man with a vision. <laughs> I, in don't this I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm very sure that our viewers have enjoyed a lot indeed. You've been watching Focus on Parliament, and we were evaluating the implications of the World Bank decision to halt any further funding to Uganda for the reason that Uganda criminalized homosexual acts. Please uh, do tune in next week, but for now, uh, from the crew and myself, it's a nice weekend. Do take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.